which I'm still doing. So you people, in another month or two, this will be longer than Nicholas Nickleby uh, <laughs> watching this play go. So a lot of you people might remember there was a guy called George W. Bush. He invaded Iraq, but he also invaded another country, New York City, back in 2004. And he came in during the middle of the Iraq War. And all the activists in New York got together and said, we have to do something. So I grabbed a couple of guys at the garage, and I said, listen, we've got to come up with a plan to demonstrate against George Bush. So we met in Long Island City, and we came up with a, an acronym, CAB, Cabbies Against Bush. And we said, all these Republicans coming into town, they're so hyped up about this war in Iraq, the least we could do is drive them to the airport to fight it. So we had this leaflet drawn up, and it says here, this coupon is good for one free trip to the airport. For any Republican delegate, right-wing talk show host, or any other chicken hawk who during the Republican convention feels that patriotic urge to go fight in Iraq and do battle, battle with the war president. Give this coupon to any yellow cab driver for a free trip to the airport. Remember, our war president has said it's better to fight them there than to fight them here. How's that working out? Huh? <laughs> to be valid, the bearer of this coupon must have a one-way ticket to Baghdad. Return, return flights will be handled by the federal government. They will bring you home one way or the other. This coupon is valid in all five boroughs except Texas. Tip tolls not included. Offer expires with the cessation of hostilities in Iraq. So we went down to Madison Square Garden, we're handing them out, and a ton of press was down there, and they were covering it. And they liked the angle, because whatever it is about uh, New York City cab drives, it's iconic, and people want to know about what we think. That's a bizarre reason, but they do. They think we have some really informed thing to say, and we don't. So I went home that night, I was watching TV, and I go to my favorite station, Fox Television, for fair and balanced coverage. Now, you have to say this about Fox Television. They give three points of view, the right, the far right, and the third right. Now, I would also recommend, if you're going to be watching Fox Television, go to their website, download their app, this way you can watch it in the original German. So, as I was watching it, Bill O'Reilly, that great Irish American, came on, and he was interviewing Michael Moore. Now, Michael Moore just had Fahrenheit 9-11 out, Michael Moore put it right to Bill O'Reilly. Would you send your kids to Iraq? And Bill O'Reilly says, no, no, but I would go. And I'm watching TV, this is this bastard, wouldn't go during Vietnam, he got deferments, but now he wants to fight in Iraq. So I said, listen, better late than never, right? So I'm watching night after night, and he still hasn't went anywhere. So I issued a press release, I said, I'm getting a couple of cab drivers, we're going down to the Fox Hall on 47th and 6th, and I'm going to go into the studio and drag this bastard out and take it to the airport to fight in Iraq. So I gather up whatever cab drivers could get, and you can see from the newspapers on the next clip, uh, Mackenzie? Yeah, go to, the, go to the next clip, yeah. Cab drivers were laying on the ground that day. I had to get my six-year-old daughter to hold up the sign in front of Fox Television. A lot of the Muslim drivers agreed with what I was doing, but this was after 2001, and they were very nervous about going to press conferences. They were actually at our garage. They all had American flags sticking out of the cab to show that they were American. And for good reason, if we go to the next clip, the ACLU did a, a FOIA report, and at the press conference, the anti-terrorism squad were there watching me and my daughter hold up the banner before we were going in to drag out Bill O'Reilly out of Fox Television. So I go to the front of Fox, security stops me, and they say, we can't let you in, you don't have an appointment. Go around to the side where the mail room is, leave a leaflet there for him. So I go around to the side, and I said, listen, Sean Hannity works here, right? Here's another one. He might want to go to Iraq, too. So I leave the two things there, and I go home. A couple of days later, I get that phone call that everyone waits for. A producer from Fox Television. They go, listen, I'm a producer for Neil Cavuto, Business Report. Want to know if you want to come on to talk about how Republicans tip, what the traffic will be like in Manhattan. They said, would you come on and talk about it? I said, I'll come on and talk about that. No problem with that. <laughs> so, bang. And this was unusual for me. They sent the black car for me. So out to Queens, picked me up at the house, nice black car through the Midtown Tunnel. I get to the Fox Hall right there at 47th and 6th, go down, get the makeup on, and it's all these business guys. 
And they were all going into Neil Cavuto. They were sitting right there, and they were saying how great the war was. It was great for Wall Street, great for munitions, great. The, the war was fantastic. Now, I'm there like, oh my God. <laughs> so now they go, all right, John, you're up. you got five minutes. So I'm ready to sit down next to Neil Cavuto. They said, no, no, you're going to a separate studio. So they bring me about 300 feet away into a separate studio, sitting in a chair, looking into a monitor, and putting an earpiece in. And it's very disorienting, because now I'm not, I can't confront Neil Cavuto. And what Fox does very well is they demonize the person that's on that they don't like. This next clip I'm going to play, look at the bomb banner that goes by. It actually says, Osama bin Laden's driver has been arrested and is being held at Guantanamo Bay. On the right hand side, act up, stripped naked, and went on 8th Avenue. So if the sound was down and you saw the image of me, Osama bin Laden's driver, and I'm naked on 8th Avenue. <laughs> so now, I was supposed to be on for five minutes. I lasted one minute and 55 seconds. <laughs> Running a cabin to Big Apples since 1977, and says the next week is going to be the biggest mess he's ever seen. So, John, you're not too psyched. Why not? Well, uh, because of all these so called security precautions that are going around Manhattan and diverting the traffic everywhere, and I think uh, Bloomberg is set up where uh, some of the delegates will be able to come in from the airports for free. We just wish that they uh, use some of the money that they have from the war profits from Halliburton and Bechtel and do a little trickle down economy down to the cab drivers. All right, so I take it you're not a fan of the Republicans. No, we're organizing a protest against Republicans. We're asking cab drivers to turn their lights on and shine the light on Bush, and also passengers getting into the yellow taxis to ask the driver to turn on the headlights and do a protest for the four days that the Republicans are in town. What if they already have daytime running lights anyway? Uh, none of the cabs. They're Crown yeah. Victorias. Yeah. There's 11,000 of them. They don't have the lights on, so if you do see a cab, uh, during those four days, with the lights on, they'll be there protesting the Bush administration and his policies back in Iraq. So there were no similar uh, protests like this when the Democrats gathered in Boston? Uh, I drive out of New York, I don't know what they were doing up in Boston, but this is what we're organizing here in New York City. All right, John, would, it, would you pick up a Republican delegate if he or she needed a ride? Oh, of course, and also, we're giving out a free coupon to anybody that wants to fight the war in Iraq. Uh, and they get that patriotic fervor during the convention, we'll give them a free ride to the airport uh, if they want to go to Baghdad and fight for my freedom. I think it'll be a very good <laughs> <laughs> uh, situation. And we'll be glad to take anyone to the airport that wants to fight on my behalf. John, is there anything this president has done that you like? Uh, not in the last four years. John, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> you shouldn't be laughing at that. I just blew my career at Fox Television. So now, that's one minute and 55 seconds. That's the letter I got a couple of days later, thanking me for my visit and saying, you'll be coming back on again. Neil Cavuto, I'm still waiting all these years later. <laughs> so now, when that interview ended, the doors busted open, security comes running in, they grab the earpiece out, and I go, hey, fellas, how did I do, huh? Silence, they were pissed, right? So now I had all the makeup on. What's naturally done is you go back to the green room and they take the makeup off. All I was thinking was, I've got to get to the black car because I didn't want to take the subway home. They're so pissed, they're going to cancel it. So I go running through the aisle at Fox Television. The security's running behind me and the producers. Now, they don't know why I'm running. I was being chased out of there like an Al-Qaeda suspect. I am bolting. I get up the stairs, on the 6th Avenue, I jump into the black car and I said, listen, go, go, don't answer your phone, don't do anything. Midtown Tunnel, I gotta get home. Got home, that letter came a couple of days later. So ended my career as an expert on a yellow cab driver in New York City. Thank you. <laughs>